Okay, so this is a bit of a weird start to a video, but I used to be a very disorganized idiot. If you had known me while I was still in school, you'd know that I pretty much constantly forgot just about everything at home, be it my keys, books, wallet, lunch, water, homework, just about everything. And the reason for that was mainly because I had kind of a loopy brain and also I didn't have any systems to help me to organize my things. And that meant that often enough I got up in the morning, probably later than I should have, and then I had to pack everything that I might need for that day in a hurry and go to school. And as you can imagine, that didn't work out too well for me. And I guess that is also part of the reason why I'm now completely fascinated by the whole concept of everyday carry systems, which is basically just the idea of identifying the things that you might need on a daily basis and then setting up a system so that you always have those things in place without any need of ever really thinking about it. So setting up an EDC system for me in my early 20s in university was sort of part of a bigger effort to become a more reliable and respectable adult. And for me, this approach has worked really well. Now, mind you, you don't have to obsess over everyday carry stuff to the amount that I do. There is certainly a sort of law of diminishing returns at work in this area of life too. But I thought maybe it would be interesting to just talk you through my current EDC backpack setup to maybe give you some inspiration. So let's get right into it. The backpack I currently use the most is a 21 liter Heritage GR1 by GORUCK. It's an absolutely fantastic backpack, but sadly you can't buy one. Or maybe you can right now, who knows really, as this is sort of a special version of GORUCK's standard GR1. It's only ever available in very limited quantities and colors, and there's no way to know if and when it will ever be back in stock. You just have to check their website. Also, hold on to your wallets because these backpacks aren't cheap. But if you ask me, they are well worth the price. They are very well made, in the USA no less, from high quality waxed canvas with extremely nice leather accents made from red wing leather. Those of you who are into expensive and well made leather boots will be familiar. So no wonder these backpacks are expensive I guess. I have been using this one for about two years now and if anything it has only gotten better over time. Now Gorak makes backpacks or rucksacks as they call them but as a brand they are all about this thing they call rucking. So basically just putting heavy weights into your rucksack and then going on longer parkours or hiking trails or whatever. Hence the name Go Rock. And because these rucksacks are meant to be loaded up with tons of weights and carried for miles on end, they are some of the most comfortable backpacks out there. If you want something more comfortable with heavy loads, you need a hip belt. But for me personally, the hip belt is kind of my line in the sand that I'm not willing to cross. Meaning that if my pack got so big and heavy that I could only carry it comfortably for longer periods of time with a hip belt, I had gone too far. And that would be my signal that I should cut back on the stuff that I bring with me on a daily basis. Another thing about Gorak is that the company was founded by an ex-military guy and that very much shows by the way these Goraks are designed. For starters, it has a fully opening front loading clamshell design. There is also almost no internal organization in these backpacks. So you won't find a pan holder or a water bottle pocket in here. No sir. But on the bright side, that gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility in the way you utilize the space in here. In the main compartment, you get this little elastic pocket that could be used to house your notebook or for documents or whatever. Then the big main compartment itself, of course. And with the front lid, you get a flat zippered pocket on the outside that has a little rain flap to make it more weather resistant. And on the inside, there's a smaller zippered pocket and a larger zippered mesh pocket. Aside from those, you get a little hidden pocket right underneath the grab handle and of course the notebook compartment on the back panel. I have tried many backpacks over the years, even after buying this one and they all have their pros and cons. But after a while, I always just come back to this one. I just love the comfort, the organization and how easy I can just access everything. No rummaging around my backpack to get to something that is buried down at the bottom. And before we finally get into the contents 
of this backpack. Just a quick side note, because while this is my EDC backpack, I also do have a smaller EDC bag, which is this Billingham Small Headley Pro bag. And these two go really well in tandem, as you will see in just a few minutes. The reason for me to also have the smaller EDC bag is that, realistically speaking, I only carry the GORUCK when I'm out of the house for longer periods of time or if I'm going really far away from home. So as a rule of thumb, if it would be sensible to also bring a bottle of water, I would probably opt for the GORUCK. If not, then I will go for the smaller bag. So if I'm just going grocery shopping or buying a pizza down the road, I will not bring my big GORUCK setup. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's get into the good stuff. Let's start with the main compartment. So again, this backpack is set up in such a way that I have everything I might need for the things I do on a regular basis. That includes stuff like riding to work on my bicycle, hiking out in the woods and traveling. Also, I just love photography and documenting my life, so cameras also play a huge role here. So let's get into it. I keep this Hulter Force seating pad and a pair of Mechanics Fast Fit gloves in the elastic rear pocket. Reason being that the leather pad is just incredibly lightweight and super durable. Keeps my bottom dry when I'm out hiking and I want to sit down on a wet tree stump or something. And I could also use it to kneel on in case something went wrong with my bicycle and I have to work on it while on the go. And these gloves are there for basically the same reason. They are lightweight and durable and they come in handy every now and again when I want to carry or lift something that is either dirty, sharp or pointy and might otherwise cut into my hands. So mostly outdoors wood stuff or again something like getting a chain back on my bike on my way to work. Now to the main compartment though. As you can see everything is really neatly organized and has its own place. Let's go from bottom to top. So down at the base of the backpack is where I keep my Maxpedition skinny pouch. I recently made a whole video about the contents of this pouch, so go watch that if you're interested. But it basically contains all the things I might need to deal with little quote-unquote emergencies. Everything from emergency cash to a stain remover, a power bank, some tools and the odd ibuprofen. It's a bit overkill, I'll admit, but it has served me really well. And especially for longer days out and about or traveling, I wouldn't want to cut back on anything in here. I might, however, buy a smaller power bank. But that's just about it. Anyway, next to my skinny pouch are two smaller pouches and both are related to camera gear. One is a filter pouch that houses an assortment of filters, all with a 49mm thread. And the other is a Maxpedition micro pouch that contains batteries for my Leica Q2, my Sony a7 IV and two spare batteries for my Sony ZV-1, as this camera's battery life is just absolutely atrocious. And that's a good segue to talk about the camera gear I carry with me on a daily basis. As you can see, I have this camera cube thing in here that rests on top of my Maxpedition pouch. This camera inlay opens to the side, not the top, which means that I can easily access my camera gear if I swing my backpack over my shoulder, just as I would with a real camera backpack. On most days, I will just bring my Leica Q2, which is my primary EDC camera for photography, and my Sony ZV-1 Mark II, which is a great little camera for on-the-go video shooting and more vlog type of stuff. There is a third slot in this inlay, but this one is mostly just used to store accessories for the little Sony, like a Bluetooth lav mic or this little Sony tripod. However, with that being said, if I know that I'm going somewhere with the specific intent to shoot some photos or videos, or if I'm on a holiday or whatever, I might ditch the ZV-1 and go for something a little more serious instead. Even with the Leica Q2 in here, I could easily still fit something like my Zeiss 55mm Prime and my Sony a7 IV with a 24-240mm lens in here, which would give me maximum versatility. Or I could bring my Tamron 20-40mm f2.8 lens if I want to go for something a bit wider. Or, probably my favorite setup with the Sony, the 24mm G Master and the 55mm Zeiss. Killer combo if you ask me. So yeah, even with just that small-ish camera cube, I can still bring some pretty serious kit if I want to. And if I ever need to bring more camera gear, I got a dedicated camera backpack for that. But again, on most days, I don't. So this is more than enough for my daily needs. Another benefit of this camera insert is of course the fact that it is taken straight out of my other EDC bag that I mentioned earlier, the Billingham Small Headley Pro. So if I want to bring the Billingham instead of the GORUCK, I don't need to repack anything. 
I just take the insert out of this backpack straight into the Billingham. And I'm done. Got everything else I need already set up. And without the inlay, the Billingham bag is super flat and lightweight, which in turn makes it easy to always bring it when I'm traveling. That's it for the camera gear though. Next to the camera insert I got a Fier Raven rain poncho and on top of that a water bottle. I have different water bottles that are used on a regular basis, but on most days I just bring this one, which is an insulated clean canteen water bottle with about half a liter of capacity. Good enough for most days and it keeps my drinks cool in the summer or hot in the winter. If I need more water, I might go for something like this 800ml non-insulated clean canteen or even something bigger like this 1.2 liter one. The rest of the stuff in this main compartment is largely dependent on the season or what I'm doing on any given day. I often, but not always, bring this lunchbox. It's just a nice item and I think it's a good way to pack your food. And yeah, in the winter I might throw a wool beanie and a pair of insulated gloves in here, maybe something like a down vest for those chilly summer evenings, or maybe an extra sweater, or maybe a blanket, again, all depending on the season and what I'm doing. With the main compartment out of the way, let's talk about this lid real quick. In the smaller zippered pocket, up on top, on the inside is where I keep my sunglasses, which are the Ray-Ban Roundmasters. Love them and haven't lost them in over two years, good stuff. I also got a pen and some paper tissues in here, and that's it. And I don't keep a whole lot in this mesh compartment either. Just a bit of paracord, a small little hardwood cutting board for tactical on the go vegetable or cheese cutting, and this little ratchet set from Toe Peak, again, mostly for emergency repairs on my bike or whatever. In the front of my pouch, I keep a Leica branded tote bag for those spontaneous trips to the grocery store after work, and a little A5 sized moleskin notebook that I use for lists or to write down some quick ideas and thoughts. The small quick access pocket on the top, right below the handle, is great to store your keys, and it's also where I keep my DJI Action 2 along with the neck mount thing that it came with. It's a great little camera for those quick POV shots of riding a motorcycle or doing photography or stuff of that sort. And there is of course also the notebook compartment on the back side and it is in fact also just about big enough to house my 16 inch MacBook Pro but I only bring this beefy boy if I really need to. Even for me this is a bit too big and too heavy to just slap around for fun. And also because of its size it just makes the back panel just very stiff and far less comfortable on your back overall. And that's pretty much it. Again the score rock is part of my back system meaning that if I were for example to go away for a whole weekend or maybe even a week I would bring this and my duffel bag and probably also my empty Billingham inside of the duffel bag. This duffel is made by a company called Nutsack from waxed canvas and leather and so it fits in perfectly with my other bags. It's got a lot of internal pockets for organization and it's small enough so that I can easily bring it with me on any flight or train or even just mount it on the back of my motorcycle. And yeah, that's my current EDC backpack setup. If this was interesting to you, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content about everyday carry gear or camera gear or photography, maybe consider subscribing. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Until next time, take care, bye.